After a one-point loss on board one in her last game, Chloe Fatsis now paired against Seth Lipkin in round 23. Seth also losing in the previous round to Kevin Fraley. Each of these players was hoping to go four and three or better to make it into the best of five finals tomorrow. This is starting to feel not quite like an elimination game, but, but pretty close to it. Huge game for Chloe, huge game for Seth, who has been atop the field for much of this event, but three and five over his last eight. Another good one here. Matt Kanick joined by Morris Greenberg. Morris, uh, what can we expect from this game? Yeah, I mean, it wasn't only that they both lost, but it was that the two players uh, one game ahead of them, uh, Mac and Ian, both won. They might actually be hoping for one of them to run away with it, and they could compete with the other uh, in these remaining games. So uh, I'm going to be looking for an exciting tactical battle. I think Chloe versus Seth in a lot of ways. We talk about old guard versus new guard, but I think their styles, uh, as they're starting to get underway, uh, I think their styles are the most different, if I had to guess, among the five players. Uh, Seth, I think, plays in a lot of ways similarly to Mac Meller. He'll find a lot of low probability bingos. He knows all the eights and sevens, uh, like Pilchard yesterday he found pretty easily. Uh, and Chloe is a very tactical player. She also knows words well. But, um, uh, and she plays very quickly. Seth plays a bit slower. Uh, so I, I, I'm interested to see how they match up against each other. It will be an interesting matchup and one with so many stakes. Players live and die for this North American championship. It just comes once a year. To be on board one on day four, the stakes must be high. DDGIPTU is Chloe's first rack. A difficult decision here. You're not going to find many points with an inflexible rack like this. Just the three-letter Doug appears to be the standout option. Undouble the Ds, play off the uh, ugly G and U tiles together. P-U-D, another option. G-U-I-D, also a reasonable play here, but sets up a big E back hook. And D-I-P-T, a fourth option. Though if she plays the T, Seth has treasury. So Chloe dodging that trap, making her best play of Doug and playing it vertically for 10 points. How do you feel about that move from Chloe so far? Uh, I mean, withstanding the vertical placement, uh, I like it. Uh, no, I kid. Uh, very good play. Uh, it, this will likely result in a slower start to a game. Uh, and when you have a lot of clunky tiles at the beginning, that's a great way to approach it where I know I'm not going to be swing for the fences right away. I need to chug through a few turns and get rid of the clunk. So I'm going to make you also do that. Yeah, I, anytime you can muck up the board when you have a bad rack, you probably ought to slow down your opponent while you rebalance your rack. Balance is not what Chloe finds, though. HHL, her draw. And Seth, A-E-R-R-S-U-Y, gets to make a statement play here. G-U-Y for eight points wins a simulation, but that is a bingo or die kind of play. Looks like Seth is also thinking about R-Y-U-S and D-U-G-S. That's 21, but A-E-R is a leave as opposed to A-E-R-R-S. A big philosophical decision here. Leave 13 points on the table, play some defense and try and bingo, or just score now and move on in this game. Morris, do you think one of these plays is clearly stronger than the other, or is this more a style thing? I think this is a style thing, possibly influenced by how you read Chloe's last play. Uh, because you really could interpret it as two ways. One is that she has clunky stuff. The other, which I think is more likely, is that she's keeping four very strong tiles. Given that she uh, chugged off the uh, D and G, if those are her highest scoring letters then Seth might be thinking she has very a very synergistic leave, like seat or something like that. So uh, it's I don't think I would have done Ryu's as a result of that, uh, although I'm not sure. Uh, it's tough. So Seth just broke Quackle because uh, his play of Dury is not even a word, D-U-R-R-Y. That is a phony. <laughs> Seth did something none of us thought he was going to do made up a word and chloe does not blink at it she sees that it gives her pithy and drops this down 
you see phonies on the board more in double challenge than in CSW's five point, but I did not expect to see a phony from Seth in that situation and did not accept to see a, expect to see a phony accepted by Chloe. They're both great at words. It's not something we see too much. Well, the weird thing is Dury, D-U-R-R-I-E-S is valid, and I just looked it up. D-U-R-R-I-E is the only valid uh, singular form of that. So I think they probably both were thinking the bingo, and uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> if you can get away with it, great job. He, he got it past me as well just now. I didn't even think about it. Uh, Guri, I think's the word, and yeah, uh, that's... Uh, it was a very, uh, it seems like a genuine mistake, not an intentional phony, but it was a very good phony word. Yeah, there's no reason to intentionally phony when you have good options available. So Seth's probably thinking this is good, knowing the seven letter D-U-R-R-I-E-S, but that comes from the six letter D-U-R-R-I-E. So interesting swing there. Seth has magnets on his rack. He plays it in the highest scoring spot for 74. Seth's not going to miss a bingo like that. He's up 84 to 36. Chloe is slowly working through another unwieldy rack. D E E F H L R for her. F E H stacks on top of magnets. D E L R is a nice leave, but you set up big stacking opportunities for Seth. So maybe you want to discount that, that play. She has a number of other ways to score points. Fled P E and I D is 27. Helped through the P and Pithy is 32. But F-E-H holding D-E-L-R for just 26 above magnets is a great equity play and synergizes well with the floating E-N and magnets, the floating P-I-T and Pithy. 26 and try to bingo here, Morris, or do you avoid exposing that triple word square? Yeah, it's tough. I, I feel like I haven't fully uh, figured out this position yet. It, it, there are definitely a few different directions you can go in. Um, I probably wouldn't do Fe though. I think looking at the board, I think after Fe, it increases Seth's average score by probably somewhere between five and ten points, if I had to guess. Uh, maybe, maybe that's wrong, uh, but it, it feels like to me that that the counterplay makes it uh, less worthwhile. So uh, I'm not sure what the correct play is, but yeah, I might go with something like Death or something. It's one of those maddening Scrabble turns where even all of the tools in the world won't help you figure out how to optimize it. I'm running a simulation, feh, fled, and helped each simming within like a half a point of one another. And when it's that close, the big thing is A, don't spend seven minutes trying to optimize what ends up being a 0.3 point difference between two plays. And B, just make a statement about your style. Now, interestingly, FEH above magnets actually seeds the fewest points on average of any of the candidate plays to set for some reason. I guess the overlaps there harder than they look. But rather than playing FEH for 28 above magnets, she plays the same three tiles to the T in Pithy for 20 to avoid exposing that red square. That's the decision from Chloe. She now trails 56 to 84 in this one. Yeah, that, that was definitely interesting. Uh, because, yeah, it, it's it's a clear point sacrifice, right? She's getting rid of the exact same three letters that she would have with Fe. So uh, I don't know if to some extent she just decided this spot and Seth's next play uh, will net more points on average uh, and not really look further at, for other plays like Fled there. I, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. An interesting decision from her, but I think she wants to keep the floaters and magnets open. If she's going to keep bingo-prone letters, she wants a lot of bingo lines on the board, and the A in magnets is indeed going to give her a bingo re-landed on Chloe's rack. Uh, going to be a playable bingo unless Seth obstructs. Seth, sitting on five vowels, A-A-A-O-R-S-U, has a hard turn here. You see he's got on the side of his rack A-A lined up. AA plays to the H in Pithy, making EAR, FAR, 19 points. But that leave of AORSU is bingo or die. It's going to be hard to score points next turn if Seth doesn't bingo, though that is a rather bingo prone leave. Uh, it's a volatile play from Seth. If he wants to avoid variance and start obstructing, ARUANA 
through the N and Magnets for 12, another option. But this crushes in a sim. Seth rolling the dice, A-O-R-S-U. If he dodges vowels, he's in good shape after this play. Yeah, that, that, I think the play makes a lot of sense. I'm just trying to look for other high-scoring plays. Like, I guess Saguaro, if you really want to blow things up, might have been an option. But, yeah, th this seems very good. Yeah, Saguaro was an option as well, but cashing in that S feels weird. Relanded Chloe's only playable bingo, and as she's done all tournament, she spots it, and she plays it quickly. She's got great command of the words, or at least she has on this stream all tournament. She's been very impressive. Relanded puts her ahead 130 to 103, and we'll see what two tiles are face down in front of Seth. This could be a big swing if he pulls two vowels. A big swing if he pulls two consonants and bingos as well. Big moment. And what is it? I, I. Have fun, Seth. <laughs> yeah, at first when I saw Chloe got AS as her first two letters, I'm like, oh, maybe Chloe's going to start running away with this. And then I saw the remaining tiles. And she also drew an II <laughs> and Q, other good stuff. So, yeah, this might, uh, this might stay slow for a bit. I mean, I, I'm guessing something audio will jump to the top of a sim pretty quickly here as Seth uh, sets that up. Audio feels so appropriate in this situation, and yet it is not Seth's best play. He has a sneaky option. This is the turn that separates the 2050 players from the 1950 players. Can you find the best option according to the sim? Uh, you might not play this depending on who you are, but M O I R A I down from the M oh, and magnet, twenty nine points exposes a massive spot, but that's twenty nine. Audio is fourteen. I think you roll the dice and take it here. Yeah, this is a Mac Miller kind of play. Uh, he will quickly like. There are some people who I think naturally are very good at making sure to look at every possible. Uh, overlapping spot that that's a weakness in my game clearly as i just like oh probably audio here uh but yeah it looks like seth uh fell into the same trap that i did uh this is a better leave obviously but uh scores much fewer points so uh yeah i it's a mistake i would have made too uh and yeah i i never know how to pronounce that word more more rye <laughs> more rye uh is uh, a beautiful uh hat. would have been a play and it's one that breaks your brain when you see because you you obviously know that the spot to the left side of it seeds massive points and you don't want to do it but scrabble's all about trade-offs you don't want to do it but it is 15 more points you increase chloe's average score by how much you're kind of guesstimating in that situation uh, it would have been tough to assess the difference between those two plays. But Moirai, as Morris said, he would have missed it. I almost definitely would have missed it too. That is tricky to spot. And uh, over Seth doesn't, doesn't see it either. Though Seth has mentioned he struggles with time a lot in Scrabble. I and mean, he's been playing quicker at this one. But there's something to be said about, you know, if a play looks really easy, like audio through a D, just kind of do it and move on. He missed a couple points, but just a couple points there and crucially held on to his clock. 130 to 117 is Chloe's lead here. A-A-B-I-I-Q-S gives her a fascinating decision. Q-A-D-I through the D and relanded feels great, but it opens the board and sets up a spot to drop I-T next turn or, or I-N or something for a no-brainer big score. But you have to do it and holding on to an S or holding onto an I yourself, rather, that spot feels good for Chloe. Yeah, and she draws the blank, and so Seth's going to bingo here with Marisis, it looks like, and then she'll probably bingo right after. One thing, though, uh, that Matt mentioned about Seth's time, he, he has historically played slower, and one thing is that Chloe played relanded so fast that Seth hadn't turned over all of his tiles. It could have been the case if he saw uh, the word... Moirai, uh before Chloe made the play, then he might have noticed uh, that it still would have played after. Uh, that's often how people will see overlap plays. It's like, I was going to make this play, and then you made it even better. 
Uh, but due to time, uh, both Chloe playing fast and maybe Seth not picking up his tiles right away, he didn't even have the opportunity to process it in that way. Yeah, so Cotty, the play from Chloe leads to, yeah, what, what we think is going to be bingo, bango. Uh, Marissus, a uh, word for growth in plants. Uh, we get Maristim from that. Uh, it does play with SH on the top of the board. That's 75 points. It also plays with OM beneath audio for 65, but you've got to take the points. And it looks like Seth having a moment that we're all very familiar with. He set it up on his rack and then puts his head in his hands and shakes it, smiles at the camera. He's not sure of this word. And now he has to make a decision. Pull the trigger on a word I'm uncertain of or uh, pass up on the bingo. IS beneath Cotty is a great bailout play too. If you don't have a good backup, I think you pull the trigger on a bingo, but gotta, pl gotta trust your gut here if you're Seth and it looks like his gut is saying don't play the bingo, at least not right now. Big decision incoming from Seth. Yeah, so I'm not sure. So, so, so there could have been two things going on there. One is that he switched around the E and the I, so I'm curious if he was wondering, is it Marissus or Myresis? Uh, that's one possibility. It could also be that he's actually thinking about, uh, you know what? I've really thought about this, and maybe Q, uh, QI and is is just a better play than bingoing here. Myers does bingo a fair amount next turn as well. Uh, and if, depending on how the sequencing goes, it could just be take the 40 points now and then the bingo rather than take the bingo and then hope for 40 points if Chloe doesn't play there. But all right, it and looks like he's going to play Misery. So he... go, go for yeah. it, yeah. So it looks like, I think he probably was genuinely confused is it Marissus or Myresis? Um, oh, he's taking it back. So, <laughs> but it, I think it's probably confirmed. He's not considering is from a strategic point of view straight out. I think he's actually literally thinking, I forget which ordering of these two tiles is it. So he's going to go for a lower point bingo. Once you notice that you have the guaranteed backup of Miseries, it becomes a lot harder to score 75 because Chloe's going to block 62 every time if she knocks off the phony. So Seth's playing a little bit of conservativeness here, and I think that's warranted. If you're uncertain of the word, take the word you're certain of. Take the 62, bank it now. Chloe has found a nice rack, A-A-B-I-O-S blank. She'll have one word that plays and two spots to play it. The word abrosia a b r o s i a plays with four overlaps to the left side of miseries for 78 and exposes an a in a triple triple it also plays making an a r to the left side of relanded for 72 and guess what exposes an a in a triple triple so uh chloe's gonna bingo here but leave herself vulnerable to big plays back from seth his next pull is very important in this game so this is a real heat check moment. I think if the blank were an R, Chloe would find this right away. Uh, but the blank obscures your ability to figure out <laughs> what the bingos are in a rack. And so it's definitely something that I could see myself missing in a game, having this R be a blank. Uh, we'll see uh, how up to the occasion Chloe is. The seven letter Apo Masi is the first thing I saw when I saw this rack. And I know my blindness with blanks and many players blindness blindness with blanks comes down to when I see one word, I tunnel vision on like that word. And then I miss the other one, especially when there's a cool low prob one like Apo Masi. And then you whiff the higher prob one you've studied before in Abrosia. So she needs to find this bingo. I know that Chloe knows and has studied this bingo. But uh, it's crunch time. She's got to find it. I expect that she will. But you want to take your time on this turn, too. Make sure there's not a better bingo that doesn't expose a triple-triple. Make sure Abroja is all you've got. And she's got to find Abroja here. A lot to think about here. Yeah, and there are other traps here in this position as well. Like, you might look through the P briefly and realize Copaibas doesn't play, uh, So, which is another low-prob word. So, yeah, I could definitely see 
this being an understandable miss. Uh, we have no indication right now in either direction if she's found Abrosia or not. Uh, well, now so we have an indication that she's she played QI played. for 31. This might actually be better. I think this is better. Um, it, it, it Just because you're bingoing so often next turn anyways, uh, it does... Uh, it scores 33 now. I, I think this makes all the sense in the world. I am going to agree to disagree with you there. I think that's a miss. Okay. I think that's a misplay. And I think Chloe just didn't see the bingo in the moment. Probably got tunneled on Abo Masi. I don't think QI is a stronger play than a 78-point bingo in that situation. A-A-B-O-S blank is just not as synergistic as you need it to be. I think that's a whiff from Chloe. She has played so precisely all tournament, but we are all human here at the top, showing just a little bit of a humanness herself in that situation. Liney is the play that comes down from Seth. He had Jin, J-I-N, in the same spot, but good job, Seth, not playing J-I-N when you don't have the D to hook in front of it. Uh, Liney, I think, a much more appropriate play here from Seth. He's up 217 to one. 91 both players with a blank on their rack means this is very much anybody's game but the play of liney up top for seth is going to leave massive bingo opportunities available for chloe she has the only front hook to liney which is a b and she has two bingos that play hooking the b in front for 90 points these are both deep in the lexicon, they're going to be tough to find, but two bingos play on top of this board right now if Chloe knows the liney to bliney hook and knows these deep low prop bingos. Yeah, I think the chats found both of them. Actually, the funny enough, the, the only one I saw right away was the one with the Z. Uh, gazabos, uh, another spelling of gazebos. Uh, so... It looks like Chloe is quickly not <laughs> going towards that, though. Uh, it's, yeah, I mean, she's already set up bag, which is worrisome, I think. Last turn, she really spent a lot of time having her letters in alphabetical order. Uh, but maybe she'll reconsider and find one of these bingos. I mean, even if she misses the bliny hook, Dagoba's... Uh, still plays uh, on another triple uh, off the I and Cotty. So, yeah, let's just hope she finds it. Uh, Gazabos and Dagobas, D A G O B A S, is the other bingo here for Chloe. Again, both play on top for 90. Dagoba plays beneath as well. I think Dagoba is a little Star Wars word, a planet as well. So, a little shout out there. But those are the words that drive me crazy is, uh, oh, that's a Star Wars thing. Is it also an actual English thing? Chloe does see the blimey hook, but does not see the sneaky gazabos or dagobas and uh, boa, the play that comes down instead. That'll bring her within one point, hold the blank on her rack, but an opportunity to flex on the stream and uh, Chloe unable to find it there. A tough miss, but one that I certainly would have missed also, not trying to criticize. That is a tough play those are deep in the lexicon. There's a chance she's just not that far through the bingos yet. A-E-J-O-R-T blank sets rack. This would be Tolaryev if, uh, you know, he had the V in space, but J-O-E, a great play here from Seth. Keep the, the super bingo prone A-E-R-T blank, score 30, crush Chloe next turn. I got a nice play there from Seth with very little for us to offer. And uh, Chloe, A-G-O-T-S-V, and a blank, no bingos on this turn for Chloe after she missed the two toughies last turn. Yeah, and I think Joe there really speaks to uh, an evolution in Seth's game. Uh, right, he's historically been a bit slower of a player, and th that's gone into trouble in some end games. But he played that within thirty seconds. And uh, he quickly, I mean, Chloe did think for a fair amount the previous turn, so maybe he determined there were no sevens and no eights available on the board at that point. And given that Chloe only added one tile to the board as an eight lane, uh, starting with an A, he quickly realized there were no bingos, just plop down Joe, move on. 
Yeah, good stuff from Seth. And again, he needs to preserve his clock. If this one looks like it's going to go down to a late game situation and at this score, you certainly think that's in the cards often. You need to hold on to your clock. Seth uh, wisely just playing J-O-E, getting through that rack and moving on in the game. It's going to be important for him to have that time. Chloe has identified Vog as the play she wants to make. This makes a lot of sense. I like holding A-E-A-S-T blank right now. The S and the T will uh, start bingos below Kadi, and it's hard to backhook that I without an S or a T. So Chloe, one more time, going to try to pull a bingo in that spot, and this time she's hit it, pulling into Troika's and a few other options that are going to play on the bottom of this board. So Chloe finding a bingo again, and these are bingos she will hit for sure. But a bingo also in the cards now for Seth. He has... <laughs> I'm sorry. Seth has just the, the filthiest play. Seth has a chance to make a huge... Oh, wait, he has nine... He has a nine through the LM probably, right? Like a meter word? Or he something has a sort? nine through the OM overlapping hefty twice that is oh, something meter but... l l like tetrameter yes. or wait, wait, wait. At, tetra no 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 atmometer at atmometer yeah. at at so seth has studied this i think i think seth has studied this i'm not sure but he's been going through the nines in the past two years so uh i don't know if this is high enough probability but it could be in the cards but it's so hard to try to flex and play the 81.9 when you've got a word you're certain of down here and you address the best bingo line on the board. That would have been absolutely filthy. There's only a couple players in the world who spot that play. And even if you see it, I don't know that it's right. We're going to figure out if that blank is an R or a D. I suspect it's a D to avoid stringing out the S hook. But I will wait for our team on the ground to confirm that for us treated or treater the play for seth he bingos for 74 pulls ahead by 81 in this game but a-k-i-o-s-t blank for chloe she's going to bingo right back in what is effectively an elimination game we're going to have a tie game after chloe plays this bingo oh man this is exciting yeah i don't i mean we'll see what their next racks will be this will be uh it looked like their next two racks are pretty likely to determine the outcome of this game. Seth probably has slight advantage given that he'll have tempo and first access to the tripling that Chloe will create, but it's, uh, it's not much of an advantage. It's a bit more than a coin flip probably. Yeah, slight advantage to the player with tempo, but Seth bingoing with one blank. Chloe finding her highest scoring bingo with her blank, 79 for Okiest, and it is 319, 321. Seth with a clunky draw after his bingo, B P N N O W X. If, Seth, or, uh, if uh, Chloe reaches in and finds a flexible rack here when Seth has an inflexible one, Man, this is a wide open game. I have no idea who's going to win. Chloe finds six vowels after Seth finds six consonants too. Whoa, what a game. Yeah, this is definitely a tale of Scrabble. <laughs> uh, you draw badly, I will draw badly as well. Have fun. <laughs> yeah, your rack sucks. Well, fine. My rack sucks too. E E E W. Uh, Chloe on, has on her rack, and that's kind of how we feel about both of these post bingo draws. Go from great racks to abysmal ones. Seth with a two point lead can't feel great about his odds with the rack that he's found. The unseen pool on display right now is incorrect. We're gonna get that adjusted for you, but uh, the unseen pool still close. Uh, not much in terms of bingo strength in the unseen pool from Seth's POV. So while the S and the T and Okiest are floating in space, if Chloe truly drew another bingo, like fine, it's just not my day. Seth can't tunnel vision on playing defense and blocking those right now. He's only up two. He needs to score some points. Box stacks on top of Okiest, making either bar or bad. Okay and XI, that's 31. NNPW, not the kind of lead you're looking to hold on to, though. Pox plays in the same spot, 
holding on to the X also makes some sense here. P-O-W and W-O-E on top of Okiest is 25. So Morris, what do you think? Should Seth be cashing in his X here or trying to hold on to it and hit Chloe with it next turn? I think I would probably cash in the X here. If you look at the board, there is no spot really for the X for scoring at this point. Uh, and aside from that, even though you're leaving PNNW, which looks pretty bad after box, uh, the newly added pwn, PWN, uh, is now in the dictionary. So you might be able to shed off most of those tiles next turn anyways. I don't know that we've had a single new word sighting on stream the entire tournament. So PWN, I think, would be our first. And yeah, that, that's a great point, that now that that word is acceptable in NWL play, that's going to be a nice bailout option. PWN is going to become the new CWM, which is one of those insta-play words when you've got it. Yeah, And also to point out another new word, if he does go for pox instead of box, noob is now acceptable as well, I think, right? N-E-W-B. Uh, yes. So, so that uh, so even though there isn't an E right now in space, uh, this leave isn't as bad historic as it was before this most recent dictionary update. A E E E O U W is Chloe's rack, but with nineteen unseen tiles, or or vowels. If Chloe identifies that really skewed ratio, she's got to start feeling good about her chances. She cannot exchange. You cannot put those vowels back in the bag and let Seth have them. If you notice that Seth's rack must be bad most of the time because of that distribution, the play of Weta, W-E-T-A, through the T and Okiest, or the play of Woe beneath it, like she's played here, feel great. Hold on to your four vowels. There's only four that Seth could possibly have. If you reach in and draw them, you've got a bad rack, but Seth's is worse. And if you don't, you've got a good rack because you just picked up consonants. And there we go. Three consonants for Chloe. Nice play from her. Good plan of attack. Despite feeling like she's down, she should feel good about her chances after Woe, given that unseen pool. Yeah, this is uh, this is gonna be a nail biter. And uh, newborn, as pointed out in the chat, I don't think plays anywhere right now. Uh, so Seth will have to move on from that. It is tough, like when you see those sorts of words that are really uh, pretty, like newborn. Uh, it is tough to move on from that and actually focus on. Okay, I need to actually find a play that plays on the board. Uh, so we'll see how Seth approaches it. Uh, but if you look at the board at this point, there really aren't that many scoring spots left. And uh, I don't really know what the correct strategy is immediately. Uh, it's, yeah, I need to zero in <laughs> a bit more, I feel like, in this position. Yeah, a few options for Seth that at first glance look dismissible, but lo looking at them longer feel great. Through the OM at the top of this board, WOMB or ENWOMB are options. And WOM, WOMB takes both a back S and a back Y. But looking at the unseen pool, there are no S's, there are no Y's. You don't seed plays back. And getting rid of WB in this situation would be great for Seth. And WOM. E-N-W-O-M-B for 26 is a fantastic option for Seth here, but it is very hard to spot that word, and you have to take the extra step of realizing, oh, it sets up the triple? Hang on. No, it doesn't. Not in this game. If Seth spots in Womb, that's a fantastic play, but it is hard to spot that, and he hasn't seen it here. W-E-N, the option. Seth holding his O as it's the final O in this game, playing his E instead as he sees three more to come. I like that from Seth, but a slight misplay here as N Womb was the stellar option. That was a curious decision to me. I won't right away say it was wrong. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Uh, but to me, it feels like there's exactly one spot on the board now where Chloe can score 30-ish points, and Seth just gave it to her. So while this does keep the option of Brow for next turn for him, if Chloe doesn't have uh, that a play that goes there, to me it just yeah I'm not sure. Uh, there were there was an there were L's unseen to Seth. 
So things like Claw, which Chloe does have, or Clue, uh, were seeable uh, in the bag. Uh, yeah, the, I, I, I'm curious about this decision. Because he, played, he had new set up first on his rack and switched to web. Oh my goodness. And now Chloe has a difficult decision here, but C-L-E-E-W here feels great. Again, that A-E-U-V leave is something that would generally give you some pause, but with three vowels and ten consonants to come, this is a great leave for Chloe. This is a great way to score and try to stay in this game. And Chloe pulls ahead by five after C-L-E-W, 376, 371. Seth beginning to find those consonants that we knew were going to come in this game. B, C, D, N, O, R, Z, the rack for Seth. He can score with the Z. He can score without the Z. There are three tiles in the bag for Seth, too, so he's got to be thinking about pacing. When it is a close game like this, very often the player who goes out first is the one who wins the game. Playing three tiles here for Seth puts the pacing in Chloe's favor. She'll have seven tiles, he'll have seven tiles, and it will be her turn. So if I'm Seth, I'm looking to play two tiles, not three. Introduce some fog of war, make Chloe's decision much harder than an easily solvable in-game for a woman who's so smart who has 10 minutes on the clock. Z-O-O -O to the O in Joe plays two tiles but holds five consonants. Is that a play you're looking to make here? Or would you try to play off more consonants, Morris? Yeah, so really interesting. Zoo makes some sense. I guess you have to hope that there are vowels in the bag, right? Otherwise, I think you're losing no matter what here if you're Seth. Uh, right? I think because you're going to need to play off the Z somewhere eventually. Zoo is the only spot. Oh, is Zook isn't good, right? Z O O K. No. Uh, uh, there, there is another really good option for Seth, and that's condom to the O M. That holds B R Z. That scores twenty eight uh, nice. points. But Seth feels like I've got to play off at least some of these unwieldy consonants. Z D N R feels synergistic. Ah, uh, Seth, a little bit in a time crunch. I think time forced him to make that play. That was a huge turn and one that I think was done inaccurately. If Seth loses the game, it's because of that. But he has found two vowels in the bag. And I think that might be enough for him to hang on and win. This is crazy, though. 385, 376, Seth up by nine. The bag now empty. Chloe's got to solve an end game. And actually looking at this, this is Chloe's game to lose if she can figure the end game out. Yeah, I guess where does the Z even play right now uh, for points? It doesn't look like he's Seth no longer has the O. He just got rid of that. So Z is no longer an option. Uh, it looks like he's not going to be scoring much with it, right? It looks like he's not going to be scoring much with it. Yes, I'm like trying to figure out the in-game sequences here. Uh, we don't quite have a Z-stick situation, but the Z is so unwieldy after Z-O-O -O taken away. I'm not seeing much Seth can do to play it aside from A-D-Z or Azide down from the A in Boa. Those score almost nothing for Seth, but he doesn't threaten any big plays using the Z because this board is just so bad for the Z. Seth's decision to keep the Z last turn is not going to pay off at all for him this turn. Yeah, yeah. So I guess Chloe now has Fawn set up. I'm not sure where she's thinking of that. Uh, my, my immediate instinct was to look at something like Avant uh, off the A in Boa, uh, just because it seems like, I'm guessing Effie would play out in multiple spots here. Uh, yeah, it looks like it can. So something like that looks interesting to me. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I guess you have the engine pull that Matt, does she have a lot of wins right now? She's about eight, uh, eight different wins. Uh, they're, they're very different sequences that do different things. I'm trying to see if she has a straightforward out into. In this situation, you would like to make a play 
let Seth do something, and then make another play and just end the game. It's easiest for a human to see that sequence. I do this, you do that, I do this, end of the game is over. If you have to make two or three or more plays to go out as Chloe, then all of a sudden there's a lot more you have to think about. And with just six minutes to solve the full end game, it's hard. Now, Chloe has spotted a win here. F.A. on top of treated for 28 points holds the unwieldy ENTUV combination, but that'll put her ahead by 19. Seth's stuck with this Z. He's not going to be able to do much with it. This is a tricky play for Chloe. ENTUV is not going to go out for her. She has to figure out Seth's next play, her next play, Seth's play after that, and then how she goes out. A lot of math, but she is great in these situations. She's just got to put her skills on display for us here to win this game. FA should do the trick, though. Yeah, and w- would Avant also win or no? Let me uh, let me run that one through. Avant, geez, that that seems the simplest to calculate. Uh, Avant, Safi, A, 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 and Boa. No, A V A U N T loses because Seth threatens R E Z and O R beneath audio. That's 24. That would oh, win the game to Seth by one. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> so important to not uh, go for the easy win, I think, <laughs> I guess, or, or the yeah. easy uh, calculation, I should say, win. Yeah, Avant losing by one. That's the out and two sequence you're looking for, but you also have to take away Seth's one threatening play. R-E-Z, the strongest option for Seth. All of Chloe's wins take that play away. They force Seth to play either Azide or Ads or from the G. He has Grizz, G-R-I-Z. Uh, but any play that takes away Rez is uh, how Chloe needs to approach this situation. Eliminate the best option, make Seth lose seven points playing his second best play. That's how she wins this game. Understood, understood. Yeah, the, the really interesting. And, and uh, uh, as Chloe looks like maybe she's now considering Fava. Uh, it's it's unclear now with the new dictionary update if Fava <laughs> is now an option. Uh, so, but it doesn't look like it plays anywhere. Uh, but the block turn last turn, I, I really do wonder uh, what the insight was there uh, from Seth's point of view. And maybe it was just that he thought the C and the B were very clunky and he didn't want to be stuck with those during an endgame. But yeah, it definitely feels like not having... Right, playing Zoo last turn was an automatic 34 points and it didn't look like there was anywhere else on the board for the Z to play easily. So I do wonder uh, if that decision was a bit rushed. Yeah, that's the play Seth needs to go back and look at. But these pre-end game situations, I feel like, are what Scrabble's all about. A lot of people uh, see this game as a, I'm just going to go out and spell the biggest words and get all the equity. But at some point, every Scrabble game turns into a puzzle. Unless you're either 0% or 100% to win a game, you get to a pre-end game situation and you have to figure out how to optimize, maximize your win percentage. Block might do the trick 50% of the time, but a different play there 60 or 70% of the time. That's truly what separates world-class players from everybody else. This also what separates world-class players from everybody else. Chloe correctly identifying one of her winning plays here. F.A., the second best sequence here for Chloe, and the best sequence that I think most mere mortals find. F.A. should do the trick for Chloe, barring something weird. Her best in-game situation was bonkers. U-V-E-A, down to the A and treated, easily the best option as the F-A-N-T leave plays to the O-M in Vog and Miseries, threatening Phantom for 30 and out. While that could be blocked, that still worked out as the best sequence. But don't play for Flash. Chloe does a great job. She found a 100% win. She likes this play. She's got three minutes left, and she pulled the trigger. Excellent players take these situations and convert them into Ws, and Chloe's done it here. Yeah, great job by Chloe, especially last game. It, it, you could think of it as a heartbreaking game. You lose by one point, and you, and she wasn't like ahead for most of the game, so uh, it felt like she almost uh, clutched a victory from the jaws of defeat and didn't quite get there. So 
a uh, great recovery here and uh yeah a great job by her overall and also to seth uh obviously he could still win his next five games and maybe get in uh get in the final two spots but uh, you got to feel for him here he's lost his first two games today uh, assuming that this uh, goes according to how we think in these remaining few turns. All right, let's rewind what I just said, Morris, because uh, this is an instance where Quackle shows its limitation. Cesar in chat saying FA actually loses by one if Seth does everything correctly. And as I run through the lengthy sequence of events here, Cesar's right. Um, if and only if Seth plays Grizz, there's a convoluted V-stick situation that he can execute, and I think he actually wins this game. But low on time, Seth instead opting to play as I here. Um, no, I, 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 I think I don't know what's going on in this game, but as I will mean that Chloe wins this game if she spots Venom to this OM that she's got set up. Wow. So, so it would have been Grizz, and then. That, that's super cool. So Grizz and then would Venom have Grizz. not been able to outrun that? Is there an issue yeah. with maybe going out with Lend somewhere? Hang on. Quackle says after Grizz, Chloe's going to play Zen. But if she plays Venom, then Seth can you stick? No. What, what on? Wow. What, what's going on? Oh, my God. No. So Zen, if Seth played Grizz, he would set himself up to play Zen. And that would win the game unless Chloe blocked with her own Zen. And if she blocks I with see. her own Zen, then Seth executes a V-stick. What a bonkers situation from both players. Whoa. That is crazy. So, yeah, would Zen be better than Zed there even? Uh, for Seth? But, yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> this is all... Uh, th this all didn't happen. Uh, so, uh, wow. Pretty crazy. And... Uh, this. Yeah, we're going to have Christian and Andrew on standby as soon as the clocks are neutralized here. We're going to get to a post-mortem. This one was crazy and back and forwards. Chloe has to feel so good about sneaking this one out. And Seth, I really do feel like he did, at least from his perspective, everything he could. Now, it's that BLOC play he's got to go back and look at. But what a game for both of these players. Drama until the end. And I think Chloe coming out with a huge W here. Yeah, this wasn't a perfectly played game by either player, right? We saw Seth miss Morisis and played Miseries and then the block play towards the end. And Chloe had two turns in a row where she didn't see uh, blank bingos. So uh, th this wasn't a clean game. It was messy. And <laughs> it's fitting that the end game is a bit uh, messy of an end game. Scrabble justice has kind of been a theme on the stream across this tournament where you make just a tiny mistake and then you end up losing a game because of it. You know, Scrabble is a game where probably 25% of the time against a great player, you're just going to sit there and lose with very little that you could have done to influence the outcome. But I love that we got a game where both players were able to influence the outcome uh, just enough with their decisions and uh, a couple key decisions ended up being the out uh, the difference maker in this one Chloe able to out Fox Seth in this end game and uh, she will hold on for a huge victory here at the Scrabble Players Championship all right got and out from Chloe this one's done we'll cut to overhead Mike 431 418 our final Four minutes in? Yeah. <laughs> no, I think you started with about maybe six. six. Yeah. Um, yeah, Grizz. Yeah, Grizz. But I didn't. Grizz. Well, so she played Fa. Mm -hmm. I played. Right, so, so, I, so what's she up? I'm up um after Fa four four three eighty five. Oh, 19. 19. 19. Yeah, 19. I do Grizz. Well, then I just do Venom. Yeah, right? but then she made a stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah, I would probably still do Venom. But then you have Zen. I think um, Venom wins though because then it's score very well, much. Yeah, yeah, because then you do so, Zen. Yeah, then Chloe just goes out. That's, that wins. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that doesn't work. 
it really still sort of but what about go back to ads so what i did with the e. ads and there was also debate about is, this without the e does he go out without the e he goes out if i play venom liner if i play the e she plays venom I play so i don't oh, play venom oh, so i have to delay venom so we're trying to but figure I kept, out i kept the e for flexibility which is ironic because maybe it was what killed me so uh, so, so Chloe, you played venom here i did because yeah so he, he, go out. Out. he plays live in her and then i went out with go. Go. So you won by like six or something? I won by 13. Yeah, 13. 13. 13. Yeah, I, I did live in um, Yeah. So if Seth had played the E. Yeah, if he played the E, I wouldn't play that now. Because he's like, so and she's got a slow play. So then play. I either play Doug. Yeah, and she's, a, or she's still up four before, after ads. After ads. Uh, you play with the E? With the E, yeah. I get two more. She's up by four. So I'm minus four. And then you can go. I get, uh, there's a couple of options. I can so keep them. Nice. But then he might just think there. Um, yeah, so I can play Gov. She plays Gov, that's six, seven, eight, a minus twelve. Mm -hmm. And but now you're not threatening Venom anymore. Yeah. Can't she even so, go out? I can't go out, that's the thing. And Black and Year, like, well, I didn't have him in here. What did I do? Yeah, so maybe just neon and neon. then I play neon and I think I should go. Oh right, we talked about neon. Can I go? I, uh, you can't go out with L I N. Yeah. Can I just do Sorry, um, on the previous turn, there's nothing I can do here. I can't do no, no, no. Oh, you guys know this is New World, right? Uh, I didn't. Oh, uh, fuck, I didn't know. Yeah. I thought about it, and I was I like, I also thought about it as you could have done it. I can I never remember how to do it. It's with an I-E yeah. and Gurry yeah. with the real, The real tragedy is I couldn't remember how to spell Mauricius. M-E-O. Mauricius. It's, 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 how would you spell it? M-I-R-E-S-I-S? M-E-R-I-S-I-S. -E oh, really? No. Oh, and Mary. So, so, um, so ironic, ironically, if I had played the correct word, I would have won a challenge. And if I had played the incorrect word, you would have left it. And I didn't know this. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was so here. Yeah, it was yeah, here. Yeah. And I just agonized over and I looked at the camera like. Oh, that's I hard. I, would, yeah, I did not remember that. Well, AZ, no, that's what we're going to get rid of your vowels. I thought, yeah, I thought about AZ. I, AZ, I oh, right. thought about. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I don't, maybe John for Quackle. Mm -hmm. Damn, too close to yeah. this. Wow. Yeah. Do you do something, Josh? Like, I have a question for Chloe. Yeah. What's your preference? Do you want a break? I, I don't care. <laughs> Whatever you want. You're okay to keep going? Yeah, I'm fine to keep going. So, Matt, we're going to flip you with table two just okay. because uh, Chloe Ian has more playoff implications. Fair enough. Okay. It works for me. So, Chloe and I play at two? <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Let me submit the score. So after, yeah. after I can't find, uh, after I can't find my bingo, I'm rewarded with a blank. So, you agree four thirty one four eighteen? I do. Yeah, that's good. Oh, two close games for you this for both of us. Both of us. Yeah. Oh my God, I lost both. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Okay. Thank you. Good luck, sir. Yes, thank you. Good luck <laughs> to you also. Good luck to see you do well now. Exactly. After this. I feel so far behind. What a morning for Chloe Fatsis. A one point loss to three time North American champion Joe Edley, and then a narrow victory here over a very strong player in Seth Lipkin. And Chloe will not get a break. She has another big matchup coming next. She has Ian Weinstein. She has to knock off some of the other folks in the top five to cement her place in the final two for tomorrow's finals. We will have Chloe and Ian on stream in just a few minutes. Huge game coming up next. Don't go anywhere. We'll take a quick.